Burkina Faso has been ruled by a military junta since 2022 and has since sought to diversify its international partners. The country under the leadership of military junta Captain Ibrahim Traore has since seen some significant changes in both its economy and external relations. Captain Traore seeks to eliminate the power of French influence in recent reports from late 2023, he made changes including the elimination of French troops from the region further distancing the country from French influence, and a declaration of removing the French language as the official language of Burkina Faso. He has also offered aid and support to neighboring Niger and Mali, which are also under the leadership of military juntas following coups that occurred in the various nations. As part of his plans to completely change Burkina Faso, Ibrahim Traore has made partnerships with major military powers both in and out of the continent. On a recent visit to Rwanda, he met with the head of Rwanda police. Rwanda has one of the strongest military forces in Africa and is led by a powerful leader, Paul Kagame. Out of Africa, he has been particular about moving closer to Russia. In October of 2023, the nation of Burkina Faso announced a partnership with Russia which would see the building of a nuclear power plant in Burkina Faso. The government of Burkina Faso has signed a memorandum of understanding for the construction of a nuclear power plant. The construction of this nuclear power plant in Burkina Faso is intended to cover the energy needs of the population, it said in a statement. Before we look into the details of this agreement, please subscribe to this channel if you are new and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any updates. The new deal with Russia is a culmination of talks the Burkinabi military ruler, Captain Ibrahim Traore, had with Russian President Vladimir Putin in July during the Russia-Africa summit in Moscow. Captain Traore requested President Putin's support in setting up a nuclear power plant in Burkina Faso, which he said would help meet the country's energy demands and those of neighboring countries. Just under 23% of Burkina Faso's population had access to electricity at the end of 2020, according to the African Development Bank and it is one of the least electrified countries in the world. The document fulfills the wish of the president of Burkina Faso, Captain Ibrahim Traore, expressed last July at the Russia-Africa summit during a meeting with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin, the statement said. We have a critical need for energy, this is an important point for me because we need, if possible, to build a nuclear power station in Burkina Faso to produce electricity, Captain Traore was quoted as saying at the time. Our position is rather strategic because we are in the heart of West Africa and we have an energy deficit in the subregion. Russia's state atomic energy agency Rosatom said in a statement that, the memorandum is the first document in the field of the peaceful use of atomic energy between Russia and Burkina Faso. It said the agreement laid the foundations for cooperation in areas including the use of nuclear energy in industry, agriculture, and medicine. Burkina Faso gets most of its electricity from biofuels like charcoal and wood while oil products account for one-third of the total energy supply, according to the International Energy Agency. According to the U.S. development agency USAID, Burkina Faso also has one of the highest electricity costs in Africa. South Africa is currently the only African state that produces nuclear power commercially, but increasingly more nations on the continent are moving in the same direction. Russia is helping Egypt to build a nuclear power plant for $30 billion following a deal signed by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and President Putin in 2017. Kenya has also announced plans to build its first nuclear power plant by 2027, but it is still to decide on its international partner. In September of 2023, Rwanda announced that it had opted for the Canadian-German company Dual Fluid Energy to build a nuclear reactor by 2028. The Rwandan government said the reactor will be instrumental in meeting the Central African country's energy demands and build resilience as a result of climate change. Although access to energy has increased in sub-Saharan Africa in recent years, it remains low, with more than 50% of the region's population still lacking access to electricity, according to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. More than any other foreign player, Russia has undoubtedly increased its influence in Africa in the last several years. These interactions range from strengthening connections in North Africa to reaching out to the Central African Republic, the Sahel, and Southern Africa to rekindle Cold War relations. Moscow's strategy differs from other foreign actors in that it usually uses illegitimate, and often illegal, ways to increase its power, such as the use of mercenaries, disinformation, election meddling, coup assistance, and weaponry sales for resource agreements. This low-cost, high-influence tactic aims to establish a world order fundamentally different from the democratic, rule-based political institutions that the majority of Africans hold dear. The outcomes from Russia's interventions in Africa, therefore, will have far-reaching implications for governance norms and security on the continent. 
Following are a series of Africa Center analyses of Russia's engagements in Africa. At the last UN General Assembly in February 2023, countries such as Botswana, Zambia and Tunisia voted for just and lasting peace in Ukraine, while Mali and Eritrea voted against it, and 15 other African countries abstained during the vote. Russia really needs Africa, Mark Dirksen, research associate at the Africa Center for Strategic Studies, told DW, especially now that Russia faces increasing international isolation. Russia, on the other hand, is important for many African countries in the UN Security Council. Russia often sides with other autocratic countries. In October 2019, for example, after Omar al-Bashir, the former president of Sudan, was ousted in a coup, Russia blocked the call by the UN to condemn it. Russia's place in the UN Security Council is problematic for advancing democracy in Africa, said Joseph Siegel, researcher at the Africa Center for Strategic Studies. Also, Russia wants to provide alternative markets to the northern European and US economies that Russia currently is locked out of. While Russia is not the only country or region trying to influence Africa, Justin Ehrenstein from Code for Africa sees the Russian leadership as an extraordinary threat to Africans, they undermine open societies. They undermine the ability of citizens to make their own choices, he said. While the partnership between Burkina Faso and Russia will benefit the Burkinabi people, questions still arise as to the after-effects of this partnership given the nature of Russia and the Putin government. Do you think Traore's decision as well as other African leaders to partner with Russia is a wise decision? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Do well to like this video and share it with others. See you in our next video and until then stay safe.